Yeah, what I'm going to work on here today is get this apron chain changed in the spreader. See, this is still the original one. I bought the spreader back in 2012. So, a little over a month here. Or a little, yeah, right, right around a month. It'll be seven years I've had this spreader. And the problem is... See how low it's hanging below here. That should be up within two inches of the bottom of the spreader when it's adjusted properly. And I've taken... Oh, well, anywhere between six and eight links out of this chain already. So it's getting pretty stretched. And last winter, when I'd clean the spreader out, I scraped these off. A lot of these had some flex into them. I'm surprised I haven't broke one here yet. So they're, they're getting thin. But the biggest problem I got is this is the adjustment here on this side. I still got room to adjust it. But, on the other side... I have no adjustment. So the last time I took links out, I could only take one out. I could take two out of that side, but I could only get one out of this side to get it back together. And then that way the chain's running off. And you can see here... And you can tell, you can compare. Yeah, you gotta show up as well, but the slat's actually on an angle. And what happens here, where a lot of people don't realize, the one, one side usually will stretch more than the other, just for the simple fact, that's the side I load most often. Even whether it's a barn cleaner, or skid steer, loader, whatever, when you dump, more will end up on the side that you're filling than the opposite side. So you always got more weight on that side, so it's stretching that faster. So like I say, it's to the point, I mean, I don't want to fork that thing out if I break it slap or something. That's what you usually have to do. If something breaks, you usually have to clean and fork it all out. So... I've done it before, not with this spreader. I've, this is the biggest spreader I've ever had, like this. I had a night side slinger there before, but bigger than this. But this is the first one I've had to do that, so or hopefully I don't have to do that. So the first thing you gotta do is loosen up the adjustments. Just like that. Now I'll go do the other side. Don't need to be I'm trying to go try to keep this shorter since I can't edit it. So we'll go do the other side now. And then now I can get in here, and you gotta pull these together. And where's it going? I can do one further back. When I use is one of these. Fence stretchers. They say you can use a come along, or I've done it before where I'd like wrap a rope and take a stick or a bar and twist it around like you would on a tourniquet to help pull it together. You gotta pull this together enough because you gotta slide them together and partially twist them to get them to come apart. So let me get this lined up here. Yeah, see, I got some slack in there. Crappy jobs. And then all you gotta do is get them wiggled around until you can slide it apart. Just like that. 
Now I'll go do the other side. Okay, I got both sides disconnected there. And now, all you do is, best way to do it is take it out the back. Uh, let's see. Okay, you want to take it out the back because these sprockets ain't going to turn on a solid shaft. The front ones will turn because they're the idlers. And you want to take it out the back because as this, if you try to pull the top back, this tray here, track where the chain comes up around over the frame, there's a a guide that turns down. Well, you pull it around the front, this chain, what's well, hanging there, it's gonna keep catching on that, that guide. So, should slide right out the back this way. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it just one-handed myself, but, yeah, got that more, more pull than that. Just hold on. Well, it wouldn't pull out as easy by hand as I thought it would. We'll try it this way. Huh. Oh well, try that something different. I think it'll go now. Problem is, it's flap in the front. The apron travels this way, so it just comes up over it. Well, it was down and it was hooked onto that. Wouldn't let it go. So then I got that up in the air. I think this will move it now. Yep, just like that. Simple as that. Like I said, I mean, the apron really doesn't look that bad, but like I said, as much stretch as it got into it, I'm just better off, I think, to change it. Since I already bought one, I'm gonna change it anyhow. Cause it's not good to run sideways like that on an angle. I gotta change. That door and that back panel here yet because it ain't gonna be good with all that stuff in there and it freezes this winter. So that'll be another day project. I won't get this done here today, but so that's how you take the aprons out. Like I say, just make sure you got that flap in the air so you're not pulling working against yourself. Next thing I gotta do here before I put the apron in is I wanna check these idler sprockets. Let's see, they're getting pretty wore to the one side. I'm thinking if I take this one, put it to the other side, and that one to this side, tell here or not. You see how this is wore here? That's because the chain is pulling against that as it comes around. And I said, I think if I flip these from side to side, then it should be hitting on this side. I have a, have a new tooth there almost, new edge. And I said, 
I said, yeah, much more, even more that bad on the shaft, so. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna switch them from side to side. Like I said, I think that would put a new wearing edge. And I said, it's good to have a new edge. Since it's gonna be all new chains, but probably best to have the new edge to a new edge, so. So, I guess I'm gonna end this video here. It's gonna get too long and I'll make a part two of putting it in because it's a big puzzle. So, thanks for watching and hopefully I get this done today here, or at least most of it back in, and we'll have a part two of this for another day. Talk to you later.